<laughs> they say most of their days are spent like this, in a hotel room looking outside the window and watching the day go by, filling empty time playing computer games. They say they sleep and eat in one room. This week marks exactly a year since they arrived on the shores of Dover from Iraq. On a boat, the two children and their parents made the perilous journey across the English Channel. Our lives were at risk. This is why we had to leave our country. That's the children's mother, Hannah, not her real name. She's worried revealing her identity will negatively impact upon her asylum claim. She and her family have been staying at the same home office sourced hotel in Middlesex ever since they got here. Life in the hotel is really difficult. We're really struggling. We've developed stress symptoms. I guess some people might argue that at least you're not in Iraq and that you are staying in a hotel in the UK free of charge and you're safe. What would you say to that? Yes, it's true that we are safe, but living in the hotel isn't easy. She tells us in that time they've only spoken to the Home Office once for their initial screening interview, which takes place after a person has claimed asylum. Since then, she says, they've not been contacted about their case. There are more than 37,000 asylum seekers living in hotels across the country, costing the taxpayer almost £7 million per day. Each person gets around £8 per week. Accommodation, schooling and medical care, if available, the same as a British citizen. We've spoken to several people who work or have worked in the Home Office to try and gauge what it's like. To make and write decisions is more difficult than people think. They're hiring large numbers of inexperienced staff who need to be trained to do this, and that takes time, so the backlog grows. People work desperate hours every day. They're hiring more decision makers, but some haven't worked in this area before, so it's taking them longer to learn, and that slows it all down. It was chaos when I was there, and it will be chaos now. The problem is the department is too big and it just can't deal with all the different parts because it is so big. I don't think that it will ever change. Today the Home Secretary told the Home Affairs Select Committee the government had fallen short and there was far too much delay in the system. We, we have failed to control our borders, yes, yeah. and that's why the Prime Minister and myself are absolutely determined to yeah. fix this problem. From speaking to those who understand how it works inside the Home Office, we understand that some of those sifting through these applications are of a low civil service grade, meaning, we're told, that they're on a low wage. On top of that, they're listening to very harrowing stories on a daily basis. And all of that, we're told, is making them feel, in some cases, like they don't want to be doing the job, leading to demotivation and a desire to leave. The asylum backlog has almost quadrupled in the last five years, from 29,500 waiting for an initial decision in December 2017 to more than 127,000 at the end of June this year. The Home Office told us, we are doing everything we can to address this issue. The use of hotels is a short-term solution and we are working hard with local authorities to find alternative, appropriate accommodation as swiftly as possible. We have increased asylum caseworkers by 80% to more than 1,000 and a successful pilot scheme to boost the number of claims processed is now being rolled out across the country. The Home Office have a comprehensive training and mentoring programme in place to help decision makers. The speed at which the backlog is dealt with obviously dictates the duration of stay in hotels and the cost to the taxpayer. <laughs> the feeling of uncertainty has caused us to not see a clear future ahead of us, not only for ourselves, but for our children. It's caused a lot of stress.